steps of the citric acid cycle. It is consist of eight step. First, that two carbon acetyl CoA combined with oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon molecule present in the citric acid cycle. Uh, so citrate synthase enzyme will act on it, and both of these will be converted into a citrate molecule. This is the same molecules which we had discussed in glycolysis, and it has a inhibitory effect on phosphofructokinase in one enzyme, which is a potent uh, enzyme of uh, glycolysis process. So this citrate is also used uh, in the form of citric acid in different flavoring agents in in uh, beverage industries. And it has a lot of other uses. So that six carbon molecule of citrate with the help of aconitase enzyme is converted into isocitrate. And then that isocitrate will be acted upon by the isocitrate dehydrogenase. And uh, here the decarboxylation process will take place, means one of the carbon will be removed. And when decarboxylation process uh, takes place along with the dehydrogenase enzyme, one NADH molecules will be released. So this will be the first NADH which will be uh, released, which will be again uh, cached later on in electron transport chain. So with the help of this decarboxylation, that isocitrate will be converted into a 5-carbon molecule, but uh, rather an important molecule that is alpha-ketoglutarate. And uh, uh, that alpha-ketoglutarate will be further act by alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. This is a kind of important enzyme as we had studied as pyruvate dehydrogenase enzyme in the previous lecture. It has a similarly important role and this will also give you an, another NADH molecule with of course with the removal of another carbon dioxide molecule. So that will result in a formation of the 6-enyl-CoA. 6-enyl-CoA is now a 4 carbon molecule. So that 6-enyl-CoA will be further act by 6-enyl-CoA synthetase enzyme and with the release of one ATP or a GTP molecule. This is a substrate level phosphorylation process. It will be converted into succinate. Succinate will be then act by another enzyme that is succinate dehydrogenase and it will give you this time an FADH2 molecule that will also be again transported transferred to electron transport chain where it will give you two ATPs and uh, that uh, succinate with the help of succinate dehydrogenase will be converted into fumarate. Fumarate again will be act by an enzyme which is fumarase and that fumarase uh, will convert that fumarate into malate. Now this malate is ready to be reconverted back into oxaloacetate at the help of malate dehydrogenase enzyme. So this time around it will give you an, another NADH molecule. So that oxaloacetate will be regenerated and this process of the Krebs cycle will continue with the addition of the another acetyl-CoA. So the, overall it will give you a 3 NADH biotilization of a single acetyl-CoA and uh, one FADH2 and uh, one substrate level ATP. But we know that uh, a single glucose molecule will give you two acetyl-CoA so this process will continue uh, twice. So overall a single glucose molecule which will convert it into two acetyl-CoA will give you six NADH, two ATP and two FADH2 molecule. Now we will look into the regulation of the citric acid cycle. This citric acid cycle is strictly regulated, especially these three enzymes are involved which has regulated the citrate synthase, isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. Citrate synthase is negatively regulated or we can say is inhibited by uh, large production of ATP, NADH, acetyl-CoA and 69-CoA. In the concentration of ATP, NADH will be high. It will have an inhibitory effect on the citrate synthase. So the process of the citric acid cycle will be halted over here and it will be not converted into citrate. Similarly, if the adenine diphosphate levels are high, it will promote the isocitrate rehydrogenase to carry out uh, the process of the citric acid cycle by converting isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate. However, again ATP and NADH will have an inhibitory effect on isocitrate dehydrogenase. And third, the NADH level, high level of NADH will also have an inhibitory effect on alpha-ketoglutarate and the succinyl-CoA which is the product of the alpha-ketoglutarate with the help of alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase 
it will have the product inhibitory effect on the alpha keto glutarate so high amount of succinyl coa will have an inhibitory effect on alpha keto glutarate dehydrogenase complex as well as it will has an inhibitory effect on saturate synthase as well another important thing to remember that low level of atp low atp will have an inhibitory effect on overall citric acid cycle now come to the amphibolic nature of the citric acid cycle we already mentioned that that citric acid cycle is not a closed circle cycle but it has some uh, synthetic as well as degenerative effect it has an anabolic as well as catabolic pathway and we know that uh, in citric acid cycle uh, we it can give us uh, a non-essential amino acid from oxaloacetate which is converted into aspartate with transamination reaction similarly alpha ketoglutarate uh, again with a transamination reaction if the body demand can be converted into glutamate and which is a non-essential amino acid and it can also be converted into purine alpha ketoglutarate has been we had discussed in uh, uh, alanine cycle so it will uh, also be utilized over there in urea uh, cycle as well that oxaloacetate can also be converted with pyruvate carboxylase enzyme into a pyruvate so once pyruvate is a form that can be converted into glucose by gluconeogenesis process and similarly malate can be converted into pyruvate as well with the help of malic enzyme and it will give you again glucose molecule citrate uh, important molecule and it can be converted into fatty acids and sterol and that could be utilized in certain uh, fertility hormones uh, production then comes the succinyl coa succinyl coa can be converted when there is a deed can be converted into porphyrin and heme we know that heme is an important molecule of uh, hemoglobin